Hello everybody. Hiya. Now before this vlog starts properly, we've decided to make a little bit of an announcement, do an introduction if you will, um, because the vlog that you'll have seen just before it at Keepy Lock occurred at the end of June and by the time everything was all sorted it was August and by the time that vlog got published, which for you guys was a fortnight ago um, obviously things have happened and the video that you're about to see was filmed just after that and as we got cruising again about a month or so later um, but first of all we want to thank every single one of you for all your lovely comments that you made uh, about our experience in Keedby Lock. Yeah thank you very much Thank you. Thank you to all you new subscribers that have come along for the journey. Thankfully, touch wood, things like that are extremely rare. And I'd like to point out something. I am the first person to admit if I ever get anything wrong. And as evidence <laughs> for that, up here, or is it up here? I never, I never guess this. Wherever. I think it's up here. Um, I'll put a link to the video of us going into West Stockwith and the complete balls up I made of getting into the lock and then apologising for it and admitting it was my fault. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I know. But there had been some comments about my poor helmsmanship and not it was concentrating. not concentrating. Filming. I was filming at the time. No, we weren't filming at the time. Mark was filming on another boat. Um, all that is complete rubbish um, and if I had have made a mistake I would have mentioned it afterwards. The key points that you must bear in mind about that vlog is that with every single tidal lock on the Trent there is always always a lock keeper who comes out and checks that you are safe in the lock before they operate it. Yeah, definitely. On this particular occasion, us and our witnesses, who all put their witness statements in to the insurance company, stated that there was no one evidently there in person to check anything. We None of us saw, saw anybody at all. We didn't see anybody. No. The insurance company have dealt with it. Um, the claim is all um, done and dusted. As you'll see from this vlog, we are moving forward. Yes. It, completely ballsed up our summer uh, it's cocked up every plan we had such that we are flexible in our plans but we are now six months well we've we've basically written off this year we're still in Yorkshire nothing wrong with that we love the place love the puddings I love the big breakfasts you serve around here fantastic and the scraps you get free in the chip shop yes oh, love God, all that start that again. So, so we, yeah, we just want to go so forward. We now, just want to go we? forward, and now now we've got obviously lock closures, floods, all manner of things being thrown <laughs> at us. Marinas that are full, we can't stay anywhere for Christmas. Um, anyway, it's that's not your problem. That's something that we will have to sort out and are sorting out at the moment. And please enjoy the following vlog. Previously on Making New Memories, three boats, including us, entered Keedby Lock. Standard practice is for the lock keeper to come and check all boats are okay, but on this occasion that didn't happen. And as the lock gate started to close, it was obvious we needed to move forward. However, despite my best efforts, we weren't going anywhere, and we got pinned to the other boats in the lock. After calling the locky on the VHF, the gates finally opened and sprung us back out to normal. Whilst there was no damage to the stern of the boat where the lock gate had made impact, when we went inside, it was a different story. The effect of the smaller boat in the middle being squashed up against us caused a bulkhead and a unit to spring back, lifting the flooring in the galley and moving the unit itself away from the wall of the boat. This was damage we could see, but there was still the doubt about what damage may have been done to the side of the hull where the boat crushed against us. It was imperative that we had the boat lifted out of the water to ensure there was no exterior damage. Our insurance company arranged for a surveyor to inspect the hull at a boatyard a few miles away from Keedby. 
After checking the hole, thankfully... She's OK. She's OK. Yes, he thinks that she's been sprung um, and, and come back out, hence the, uh, the damage that's inside the boat. But um, tears again. It was a relief to hear that she was all OK. We then needed to obtain three quotes from the three boat yards nearby and wait to see who would be the first to undertake the work. In the end, in agreement with our insurers, it was Steve Ellis based at Staniland Marina whose quote we went with. All of this process took time and we cruised backwards and forwards along the Stainforth and Keedby Canal until we were given the authority to go ahead. We spent around a month in Staniland. We had to be off the boat for a while while some of the work was done, which also included having a full gas inspection. In this vlog, we finally get back to cruising and you join us just past Bramworth Lock. Hello, and welcome to today's vlog. Hiya. Ah, well, here we are. We're on the last little bit of the Stainforth and Keedby Canal. Behind us is the last lock at Bramworth, or Bramworth, how you want to say it. Well, I think it's pronounced Bramworth Lock. Um, and just ahead of us is a little V junction, because going up here behind us is, fun enough, called the New Junction Canal. It's about five and a half miles long and it's completely straight. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get going. Obviously we've left Stanleyland Marina. Thank you everybody there. Oh, great thank bunch you. Of, great bunch thank of people. You. Lovely. Uh, enjoyed the Thursday night quiz. <laughs> and bingo. And bingo, yeah. And Eyes curry. down. And curry. <laughs> Lovely. Excellent. If you're in this area, you can moor up opposite. You don't need to get a mooring in the marina you can moor up on the towpath. Anyway, today we're not going to go far, are we? No. Literally. <laughs> literally <laughs> just, the down bend. The, just down the canal. Um, well, hopefully, if we can get a mooring. Yeah. Uh, it's a place called Barnby Dunn. It's, it's a lovely little village. It's got everything you need, including a chip shop. <laughs> oh, don't start that again. <laughs> it's got a chip shop. Uh, it's got a lovely farm shop. Nice place to be. It's bank holiday weekend um, this weekend. So that would be a nice place just to hole up for the weekend. The weather's not looking particularly good, but there we go. Well, we're out start. cruising at last. We're out, back out <laughs> cruising at last. Yeah, hooray. Everything's all done. And we're heading for Sheffield eventually. So let's get going. As we leave the Stainforth and Keeby Canal, it becomes the Sheffield and South Yorkshire Navigations. The new Junction Canal was one of the last to be built, certainly one of the last commercial waterways to be built. It was opened in 1905 to commercial traffic and still has well, at least one boat which carries oil called the Exol Pride, which you may see if you're up and down here. In fact, the last time we came down here, because we've been down here before we had the repairs done, uh, we stopped off at exactly the same spot where we're going to attempt to moor up today at Barnby Dunn and blow me down the Exile Bride came past our moorings. So the new junction canal links the River Don navigation and the Stainforth and Keedby Canal with the Air and Calder navigation, which is where we'll end up in a few days time. It's completely straight, five and a half miles long. It's got one lock, but it's also got the aqueduct over the River Don, which is protected by large guillotine gates. Now that's not because the canal might flood into the river. It's more to do with the river levels of the River Don might flow into the canal. And because this is quite low lying land around here, it's liable to flood. Hence the reason why there's some guillotine gates there to stop that happening. Now, uh, what was that we were saying about commercial traffic? I'm not sure what this is coming towards us, but it looked quite big. So I've slowed down to tick over because the bridge hole, although it will probably take both of us, I'm not taking that risk. So I slow down to tick over, let him come through first. I don't actually know what it is, but um, I don't think it's the XL Pride. I know it's Friday and I know it does two runs from uh, Hull. Last time we came down here it was on a Thursday. 
Oh, and Jan's telling me there's another one behind it, so I'm definitely going to stop. There we go, we'll just coast down here now. Give him plenty of room. This looks like a Dutch barge type boat. Still quite big. Followed by a normal sized narrow boat, which looks tiny by comparison. Coming to Barn be done. I already see some boats moored up, and I don't know if you can see the road bridge. It's quite a busy road bridge. This. If Jan has to stop the traffic, this is serious traffic management. This is. <laughs> we'll see. I'm trying to find a more in this side of the bridge, not because we don't want to go under it or through it. Uh, because we will do eventually uh, it's just I'd like to moor this side if possible but it doesn't look like it's going to be possible because the only moorings really are for the services and to do the bridge we'll see you can probably see the um, mechanism of the lift bridge there is possibly a mooring on the end here I'm not sure Oh, hello. Yeah, over. Okay, there's three boats coming through, and there is moorings where we usually moor. Over. Ah, okay, fair enough. I'll stay here until they've come through then. Over. So, yeah, this is quite a major road. In fact, you'll see the traffic backed up all the way to. I don't know if you can see the white van over here. Where are you, white van man? There you are. Um, and then the traffic goes all the way the other side. You can't see it's past there. Yeah, it's quite a main road this is. Now the only thing is, to work these things you have to put your key in. Your British Waterways key, as I still call it. Your Canal and River Trust Don't key. Forward, over. Yeah, okay, over. Um, but then you usually have to leave the key in. Now I'm going to wait here a minute until they've gone. Over. Tony, over. Sorry, said that again. Over. Put the bridge down. Over. Yeah, they'll need their key back, won't they? Over. Yeah, that's why she's going to put it down, and then I shall open it for you. Over. Okay, over. By that time I shall be in the middle of the canal. Over. So yeah, like I was saying, you use your key. You can't take the key out until you've completed either the lock or, in this case, the lift bridge operation. So... Hello. We need to be a bit further forward so we're not taking up too much time. I'll just put a bit of gas on. And we should be able to get in front of that cruiser. There's a convenient little El Sand Point, water point, bins behind the hedge here on the left. 
We're going to stay here for the weekend now anyway. The massive pile of weed, where you're going to pour up and have to go in front of it, over. Yeah, don't worry, I'm going in front of that cruiser, over. Now, there is sometimes a bridge keeper. Is that what you call them? I don't know. I think he only works two days a week. I don't know. I'm not sure. There's a the traffic hold up there. Jan, what are you doing? Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, the only reason for mooring up the other side of the bridge is this is a bit of a busy road here next to the mooring. But it's fine. It's okay. It is what it is. There's a lot of this weed about at the moment. I don't know what it is, but um, it gets into uh, mini islands, plumbing clumps of it. Like I say, I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. But there we go. I mean, it's busy anyway, because that road is quite busy as it is. Oh, that's barn be done. Done. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, we're on the way to Doncaster. Now, there is a few public moorings. CRT facilities, I think. There are no L sand points, if the map's correct, at all between here and Sheffield. Uh, which either means we've got to go all the way to Sheffield or we're going to have to come back here early. Don't know what we're going to do yet, whether we are going to do the 11, I think it's 11 locks, Tinsley locks. You have to phone up beforehand to book them, at least a day before. Not sure yet. But obviously before that, we've got a few other places to go, including a castle. Mm. Let's see how far we get today. So this is Long Sandal Lock. There's a water point right on the tip of the lock entrance. So be aware of that if you come in from where we've just come from, Barnby Dunn. I think there's another water point, but we weren't going to risk it. Nice lock. There is a lock keeper's office. I've never seen anybody in it, but I'm guessing there is when the big ships come up here. And then just past the lock on the right hand side, on the starboard side as you go past there's some nice quiet little moorings. Never seen them empty yet, because we've been up here a couple of times as you're probably aware. But yeah, nice little spot. Imagine as we go around this bend, which is quite a wide bend actually, that there would have been on this bank here, I'm pretty sure, warehouses where boats would have unloaded and loaded goods 
obviously it's been raised and it's been flat for quite a number of years I believe and now they're building houses on it. it seems a perfectly sensible thing to do. You can tell that something was here because of this high wall and I think there are still, if you look carefully, I think there are still chains attached to the walls or at least rings where boats would have tied up to. That's my theory. If you've got any knowledge, because I've not looked this up, Tony, what are you doing? Bad boy. Then let me know in the comments. This is the entrance to Strawberry Island Boat Club. Spent a lovely week there, not so long ago, about a month ago now I think. Lots of facilities. Can't remember how much it was a night, but I know it wasn't expensive. Pay extra for an electric hookup. Got water at the end of your pontoon, L Sam. Everything you need and a clubhouse with a fine selection of ales. Thank you, Sarah. Now they say you're not a proper boater until you've fallen in the water. And I have to say right now, this has nothing to do with the ales on offer at Strawberry Island Boat Club. It had more to do with the rain, a wet rope, and an old man who just happened to slip on the rope. And fell in the gap between the boat and the mooring pontoon. Thankfully, I was able to hold on to one of the mooring poles, so I didn't fully immerse myself in the water and a passing boater helped me with some words of encouragement. It did, however, leave a nasty little bruise on my thigh. Shame. Of course, that channel that leads off from the main canal now is where the old line used to run, and at the end of it is where the old lock used to be. So I basically go in this way, dispensed with another time-consuming and tedious lock. That's why it's an island. And somewhere down here will be the exit point where you would have come out. The original 12th century Norman building burnt down on the last day of February 1853. The fire resulted in the loss of the medieval library. The current building was designed by architect Sir George Gilbert Scott and constructed between 1854 and 1858 at a cost of £43,126.4 shillings and 5 It was consecrated by the Archbishop of York on the 14th of October 1858. It's a Grade 1 listed building and it's a great place for us to start our adventure around Doncaster.
Morning, sir. Morning, looks lovely. Me or the fish? Uh, both. both. <laughs> Got it. Without beard and tash, definitely. Yeah. You're rocking it. Icon, me, you know. You're an icon. Yeah, absolutely. And to women of a certain age, I'm told. There you go, you see, hold on, hold on, there's a woman of a certain age here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a bit quiet today then, is it? Or is it yeah, it's not a market day today. So ah, that'll be it market then. Market days are Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, but today is a prep day for us, so uh, you just getting a few jobs done. And the market closes at two o'clock, so it's a relatively short day. Got it. Jan's looking for a bargain. Looking for a bargain, are you, dear? Stretch trousers because I've put weight on doing locks. Well, need to lose it. All we have to do is press buttons around here, aren't it? No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's that sign? Sorry, what are they? Well, they don't look real for a start. Four ninety-five a slice. They are amazing, though. I've got the wrong glasses on. No. Oh. What's that one? Neapolitan. Ooh, look at them. This is Neapolitan. Mars bar cheesecake. Mars bar cheesecake. Chocolate orange. That's the one with sparkly bits on it. That's the Mars bar cheesecake. They've, oh no, they've all got. What's this one? Oh, that's a biscotti. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Lotus biscotti cheesecake. Dad's beer goes here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Coaster. Co yeah. Cheese, like a deli. This cheese, beers. We're having the meal deal. So it's grilled cheese, snack, and a drink. And you get the choice of cheeses. You can have just a cheese sandwich, grilled cheese sandwich. These types of cheeses. I'm having a smoked cheddar and caramelised onion chutney. Cheese, isn't it? Grommet? Oh, yeah. You and your chips, but give me cheese any day. You can see that they've got um, roast dinner. Roast dinner cheese. Okay. But they've got my favourite, Black Bomber. Yeah, they've got Black Bomber. Oh, they've got loads. Just go and check it out. She's got a mouthful. <laughs> Look at that. We hope this has whetted your appetite to see some more. Are you serious? That is so cheesy. Join us next time as we visit Conisborough Castle. Oh, at the top? Yeah, don't, because you've got the shorts in your bag. Oh, okay. That's another type of YouTube channel altogether. And in the meantime, don't forget to give us a thumbs up for a like. Subscribe to the channel, it's totally free to do so. And then when you have subscribed, press the bell icon. Ding! Thank you, Chan, and YouTube will notify you next time we upload a vlog. In the meantime, stay safe. Thanks to all our supporters on Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye! <laughs>